Welcome to the new music. I'm J.D. Roberts. And I'm Jeannie Becker. Tonight on the show, you'll see Cheap Trick in performance. And we'll feature one of Toronto's original punk bands, the Diodes. We'll bring you an interview with Tom Petty of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And we'll also bring you an interview with Carol Pope and Kevin Staples of Rough Trade, who will be featured next week on a new music simulcast. In a couple of minutes, we've got an exclusive interview with Dennis DeYoung of Styx. Now, if you had to pick the top three concerts in Toronto this year, one of those would have to be Styx. They did two sellout shows in October, and their album Cornerstone has been on the top ten for about five weeks. They also have a single in the top ten, which, strangely enough, for a powerhouse rock band like Styx, is a ballad. But it could be that diversification that makes the band popular, and they just keep getting bigger and bigger with every album. We'll be right back with Dennis DeYoung and more music from Styx after these messages. A lot of people think that Styx is a band that's manifested itself over a few short years in the mid-1970s. You've actually been together with uh, Chuck and John Panazzo since 1963? Yeah, John and I uh, and Chuck, uh, we grew up on the same street in Chicago, 101st place, and it's, uh, it's on the south side. We lived across the street from each other, and... Um, uh, was, I was about 14 years old, and I had uh, stopped playing music for about a year. I'd gone to high school, and I joined the football team, and I thought that was more important than music. So I gave up playing, and uh, one summer, uh, I, I heard this music coming from their house. Now, I didn't know John and Chuck that well. They were two years younger than me, and, you know, when somebody's 12 and you're 14, that's a big difference in age. So uh, I just knew they were kids on the block, and then I heard this music coming from their house, and I... I went inside, and, and they had this little group, and uh, they had a keyboard player. And uh, it, I really got excited, you know, and uh, so I talked to John and Chuck after the kid left who played keyboards, and I said, hey, come on over to my house. I play better than that kid. Uh, I'd like to be in your band. So they came over to my house the next week, and down in the basement we went, and we started playing, and, and uh, that kid uh, was, uh, you know, replaced. <laughs> and uh, that's how the band was actually formed. Blown out, so to speak. Yeah, well, he was really a beginner. You know, and I had been playing, geez, eight years already. I played since I was seven or six. And uh, so he was, he'd only been playing about a year. So, you know, I, I was uh, a little bit better than he was. He was just starting out. Now, at, at that time, you were playing accordion. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I was playing, as a matter of fact. I took seven years of lessons on accordion. And uh, just about that time, the accordion, when I started taking lessons at seven years old, the accordion was a very in vogue kind of an instrument. Uh, that was before the, you know, the, uh, the big guitar revolution that was to come some years later. And uh, so I was playing accordion because it was fashionable, but then it became, you know, unfashionable. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons I stopped playing and started playing football is because I, <laughs> you know. But uh, I actually the band, I played accordion for a lot of years with the band. And then I switched over to organ when, uh, when the portable organs came in, you know. What kind of music were you playing back then? Terrible. Yeah, terrible, rotten music. And we were playing, uh, <clears throat> this would be, I hate to date us, but this was actually, this was before the Beatles, okay, it hit America, because the Beatles really didn't hit strong until the end of 64, almost 65. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at that point, we were doing uh, what they call standards, which means uh, things like, oh, geez, I like Stardust. Um, let's see. Contemporary pop tunes like uh, there was a thing called Asia Minor and uh, Yellow Bird and you know things at Moon River that kind of stuff we were doing that kind of stuff it was all instrumental it was there was no vocalizing at that point. Back then when you were playing in a in a basement band did you ever have any premonitions of how big sticks would become? Well, you know it's funny. I think everybody, you know, I think I'm sure you had a dream that you know, did you ever think you'd ever be sitting here doing this in front of a television? Uh, not when I was very small. No, I suppose not. But uh, I, I kind of, I think my dreams didn't really start until after I'd seen the Beatles the first time on Ed Sullivan's show way back. I don't know what year that was. It might have been 64. And um, when I saw that, it was the first time I'd ever seen a band play and sing because at that point in America there hadn't been any uh, rock and roll groups. The rock and roll groups were usually either solo artist singers, group singers, singing groups, or instrumental groups like The Ventures or The, uh, the Impressions or The Temptations or Frankie Avalon or Fabian or Presley. 
there weren't, per se, rock and roll bands that sang and played at the same time. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, when we, when we saw the, you know, the, the, what was uh, termed the British invasion of bands like the Rolling Stones and uh, Dave Clark Five and the Beatles, that really inspired us to, you know, to try to sing and play at the same time. The first few years for Sticks, to say the least, were less than successful. How'd you keep yourselves alive back then? Geez, we cried a lot, and, uh, well, I don't know, like, every, you know, I think everybody in show business has a, has a heartbreak story, and ours isn't any much different. It's just that um, the only thing that hurt us is that we, <clears throat> we've been doing the same brand of music since 71, when we made the first in 72. And in that time period, our style of music became popular by other groups who came after us. When we finally did become popular and noticed, people sometimes confused the fact that we were derivative of things that they thought came before us, when in fact we came, became, we came before them, but no one knew it. Okay, so if you were going back and listen to our first album, you'd hear essentially a rough form of what we are today. Some people thought that The Grand Illusion was our first album. Some people thought Equinox was our first album. Equinox was our fifth album. So you understand what I'm getting at. You like to be able to keep a private life? Totally. Yes. It's yeah. A very important thing to you. Yeah. In fact, this, uh, I did my first radio interview in almost two and a half years last week. I hadn't done any interviews in, in two and a half years. And uh, this is my second. And only because I think the important thing is the music. <laughs>